A short history of marriage. Voltaire was one of the greatest French writers. He could speak and write English fluently. Voltaire never married, perhaps because of his belief that divorce is probably of nearly the same date as marriage. I believe, however, that marriage is some weeks the more ancient. Will Rogers was an American humorist, actor, and writer. He was descended from Cherokee Indians. He did get married in 1908, even though he said, "I guess the only way to stop divorce is to stop marriage." He had four children, and was killed in a plane crash in Alaska in 1935. Defining marriage. Marriage resembles a pair of shears, so joined that they cannot be separated, often moving in opposite directions, yet always punishing anyone who comes between them. So said Sidney Smith, an English writer, Anglican clergyman, and Britain's greatest wit, Anglican of the Church of England. Clergyman. A spiritual leader of the Christian Church. Wit, a person who makes clever jokes with language. Marriage resembles a pair of shears, so joined that they cannot be separated, often moving in opposite directions, yet always punishing anyone who comes between them. Resemble, look like something or someone else. Shears. Large scissors with long blades. Separate, remove one thing from another. Punish, cause someone to suffer for an offence. Come between, try to separate someone from the person or thing they desire or love. He married in eighteen hundred. Have you farted? Mwah. What makes a good marriage? Samuel Taylor Coleridge was an English poet, literary critic, and philosopher. Coleridge was a creator of the Romantic movement in England. The Romantic movement was a movement in literature and art during the late 18th and early 19th centuries that celebrated nature rather than civilization. One of his most famous works is Kubla Khan. Published in 1816, this is a poem about the Mongol and Chinese emperor Kublai Khan, 1215 to 1294. In Xanadu did Kublai Khan a stately pleasure dome decree, where Alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man, down to a sunless sea. Coleridge was inspired to write Kublai Khan by Marco Polo's book. The Travels of Marco Polo. Kublai Khan married four times and had twenty-two legitimate sons. He also had unknown numbers of other children by his concubines. A concubine is a woman who lives with an important man, but does not marry him. According to Marco Polo. Kublai Khan added thirty virgins to his concubines every year. A virgin is a person who has never had sex. Coleridge married Sarah Fricker in 1795, and had three sons and a daughter. His marriage was unhappy, and they were legally separated in 1806. Coleridge wrote of marriage. The most happy marriage I can imagine to myself would be the union of a deaf man to a blind woman. Deaf, unable to hear. Blind, unable to see. An opium addict and alcoholic, Coleridge died penniless on the 25th of July, 1834.
Addict. Someone who cannot stop doing something that is normally harmful to their health or well-being. Penniless. Without any money. Why marriages fail? All marriages are happy. It's living together afterwards that's difficult. So said an anonymous person. Anonymous. A person whose identity is not known. What they meant was that on the wedding day, the bride and groom are invariably happy and full of confidence that their marriage will survive. In favour of marriage. Samuel Johnson was an English writer and lexicographer. He wrote a dictionary of the English language published in 1755. Johnson took nine years to write the dictionary and he wrote it all himself. Johnson's dictionary was not the first English dictionary. There had been many English dictionaries before it. Johnson's dictionary was the first to comprehensively document the whole of the English language. For 173 years, until the arrival of the Oxford English Dictionary, Johnson's English Dictionary was the preeminent dictionary of English. Johnson married Elizabeth Tetty Porter in 1735. Johnson was 25 years old. Elizabeth was 21 years older than him. Elizabeth already had two sons and a daughter. Johnson wrote of marriage, Marriage has many pains, but celibacy has no pleasures. Johnson displayed many obsessive-compulsive traits that are associated with Tourette syndrome. Warnings against marriage. This engraving, entitled Harmony Before Matrimony from 1805, is by James Gilray. It shows a couple before marriage. The lovers are singing together in harmony from the book Duets de la Mort. On the table, we see a book by Ovid, probably the Ars Amatoria, a manual of seduction. On the walls we can see the torch of Hymen, the ancient Roman god of marriage. We can also see the bow and quiver full of Cupid's arrows. Cupid was the Roman god of love. There are numerous depictions of couples. Two goldfish in a bowl on the shelf. A butterfly with its reflection in the mirror. A man singing to a woman and playing an instrument on a Chinese vase on the shelf. The vase contains two entwined roses. The artist, Gilray, was depicting a typical middle to upper class courtship. It 
was typical for such young ladies to be educated in music, drawing and French in order to attract a suitable husband. Gilray has added some warnings about love to the picture. In the picture above the couple, we see Cupid. He has dropped his arrows of love and is shooting a gun at a couple of lovebirds. There is a heart-shaped vase on the floor depicting a sphinx. The Sphinx was a terrible monster that terrorized the city of Thebes. The cats appear to be fighting furiously over the sheet music. Gilray published another picture on the same day, the 25th of October, 1805. Matrimonial Harmonics depicts the same couple some years later. The picture shows the danger of basing the couple's courtship almost entirely on music. The husband has now lost interest in music. He is trying to block out the noise by covering his ear. The wife is now more interested in music than ever and has neglected her duties as a wife and mother. The maid is looking after the screaming child. The cat is fighting with the dog. Cupid, love, is dead. The passion between the couple has turned frigid. Even the lovebirds don't look at each other anymore. Hyman has fallen asleep. Underneath the piano is sheet music titled The Wedding Ring Dirge. For this couple, marriage isn't a word, it's a sentence. King Vidor was an acclaimed American film director. Vidor himself served three sentences, 1917 to 1924, 1926 to 1931 and 1932 until his death in 1982. How to stay married? Benjamin Franklin was one of the founding fathers of the United States of America. He was a noted polymath. Noted widely known and admired. Polymath, a person of great intelligence who has a great knowledge of many subjects. He was a leading author, politician, scientist and inventor, among other things. He invented many things, including the lightning rod and bifocal glasses. Lightning rod, a metal strip running from the topmost point of a structure into the ground to protect a building from damage by lightning. Franklin proposed to 15-year-old Deborah Reed when he was just 17 years old. Propose. Ask someone to marry you. Deborah's mother would not give permission for her daughter to marry. While Franklin was away in London, England, Deborah married another man, John Rogers, who ran off with her dowry to Barbados to escape his debts. Dowry, money or property brought by a wife to her husband when they marry. After Franklin returned to America, 
he established a common law marriage with Deborah Reed on September the 1st, 1730. Common law marriage, a marriage relationship based on agreement and the fact of living together rather than by legal ceremony. Franklin could not legally marry Deborah as she was already married and they would have committed bigamy. Bigamy, an offence of marrying someone when you are still married to another. In 1730, he also announced that he had an illegitimate son, William, who he brought to live with him and Deborah. Illegitimate, children of parents who are not lawfully married. He had another son and a daughter with Deborah. Franklin's common law marriage lasted 44 years, so he probably kept to his own words of advice. Keep your eyes wide open before marriage and half shut afterwards. Love and Marriage Ambrose Bierce was an American satirist, short story writer and journalist. Satirist, a person who writes with ridicule, irony and sarcasm. He married a wealthy miner's daughter in 1871 and they had two sons and a daughter. Wealthy, having a lot of money. Miner, someone who extracts precious minerals from the ground. His marriage was stormy and he separated in 1888 and divorced in 1905. Stormy, not calm, full of fights and disagreements. His marital experiences probably helped him with the definition of love in his The Devil's Dictionary, 1911. Love, noun, a temporary insanity curable by marriage. And he defined marriage as a community consisting of a master, a mistress and two slaves, making in all two. Mistress. A woman who has authority over others. Master. A man who has authority over others. Slave. A person who must do the bidding of another and is entirely dominated by them. He disappeared in Mexico during the Mexican Revolution in 1913 and was never heard of again.